Hello, Chris at ePianos here. I've got two Yamaha portable pianos here, the PS500 on my right, and the P515 on my left. These are two similarly priced models, and we get a lot of questions about what the differences are between them. That's what this video is all about. First of all, let me play them on their default piano sounds for you to hear. They're both really nice. They are both really nice. But this video is about the differences between them. So while the basic design features are the same, as you've no doubt noticed, they're quite slim, aren't they? Uh, and they're narrow. And this means that mm, they're relatively portable when you're talking in comparison to traditional pianos, certainly. An able adult might be able to quite easily pick them up, put them under your arm, and move around with them. Um, and so it's the portability is the main thing. That's the main thing that they have in common. And they're flat underneath as well. So you put it on a collapsible keyboard stand for going out to play gigs, or you can put it on a tabletop at home, both of them. Um, they do have their own stands made for them as well, which are optional extras, but they will go on tabletops and be moved around. Now, at first glance, they do have these similarities. And the other big thing is they both have 88 uh, keys. 88 weighted keys, weighted being uh, the term we use with digital keyboards like this to say that they feel like traditional pianos to play. There is a key, a hammer mechanism inside which gives them a real mechanical resistance, so they feel like traditional pianos to play. But let's get into the differences because this video hopefully is going to help you decide which one is right for you. Difference number one, this is the big one that jumps out for me, is that the PS500 has something called a Stream Lights Learning System, and it's all to do with this panel over the top of the keys. Um, it is an integrated visual learning system, and it's very much designed to assist people who are either complete beginners or that prefer learning in a very visual way, perhaps because they don't get along with traditional learning methods like reading music. Um, the Stream Lights learning system uses lights that appear on a panel above the keys and they fall down towards the keys showing you which notes to play and crucially which notes to play next for any selected song. Uh, the system is extremely easy to use. Even complete beginners are able to sit down at this piano, follow the stream lights to learn music and play along with the backing songs. P515 does not have the Streamlight learning system, or indeed anything close to it. It's just a regular turn it on and play piano. So we'll get into its benefits, but that's the major difference between these two models. Difference number two. This is to do with the actual piano key mechanism. I mentioned weighted keys earlier on. They're not precisely the same on these two models. I would say the P515 definitely has the superior weighted key mechanism. Um, and that means it's a playing it is a more authentic representation of playing a piano than playing the PS500. Uh, now, while both models do have weighted keys, um, the 515 mechanism is called NWX or Natural Wood X. The white keys um, are made, this is what the W is all about, are actually made out of wood just like on a traditional piano, which makes them more authentic to play. So um, I'm going to play them again for you now and just talk a little bit about the differences 
in the key mechanisms. Now, I can't complain about PS500. That's a really nice playing experience. <clears throat> the key mechanism, it is good. It does feel like a traditional piano to play. And the speakers, the onboard speakers, um, which admittedly in a video you can't really get a good impression of, but they're quite large on the front panel of this keyboard. And I do feel like there's a very full sound coming through. It is nice to play, but I have to tell you that playing the P515 is a different experience altogether because from the minute you play the keys there is something that makes you feel more connected to it. It makes you feel like there's more dynamic range available to you and I often say this in my videos, it's a little bit like painting. I feel like P515 because of its key mechanism in particular gives me access to more shades of a colour. I'll stop waffling on and play it a little bit. Now, uh, I do feel a much more of a connection to it. Uh, and as a, as a player of many, many years, I feel like I want to get involved in that. And I can lean into it and I can play with a, more of a natural verve. And it's responding to me. It's responding to the inputs, um, which to its credit, <laughs> that's why I think for playing piano alone, the P515 has the advantage because of that key mechanisms uh, because of the NWX key mechanism. Now on traditional pianos um, there's another mechanism inside a weighty key mechanism that P515 has that PS500 does not have and this is called the escapement mechanism and that's what the X is in the NWX. Um, now on traditional pianos the escapement mechanism is what allows the hammer to be released from the string after striking it even when the key is depressed and it allows the string to continue vibrating. Now in a digital keyboard, of course, there are no strings and the feeling of the escapement mechanism, which feels like a little uh, bump at the end of the key travel, is not insignificant uh, on traditional pianos. Um, and the inclusion of it on the P515, as well as the synthetic ivory um, and ebony key tops it indicates to you hopefully the level of detail that Yamaha go into to recreate the real experience of playing a traditional piano. Now in comparison the P5, the PS500 while it does have these weighted keys it uses a mechanism called graded hammer standard which um, 
while it's perfectly adequate for beginners, it is perfectly adequate for beginners, I have to say. Um, indeed, if I was teaching a student, they said they were learning on a PS500, I would still be absolutely thrilled. Um, but this is undoubtedly an area where P515 has the advantage. Uh, the GHS, the graded hammer standard mechanism on PS500 is the same one that could be found on Yamaha's student level P45 model. It's the first weighted keyboard in their range, which gives you an idea of the, uh, the, the quality of what's on the inside. So if you play piano to a high standard, I'm almost certain that you'll be able to feel instantly how the wooden keys on P515 allow your fingers to move more nimbly over the keyboard, particularly when playing fast passages. But for me, the big thing is how you feel connected to the instrument because you feel it's responding to you. Therefore, that helps you respond as a player and play with more dynamic range, light and shade, etc., etc. Now, uh, difference number three is the rhythms and accompaniments that are available to you. So, first of all, what are rhythms and accompaniments, if you don't know? It's a way of getting like a band or an orchestra to play along with you built into the keyboard. So you play and the technology follows what inputs you're putting in and basically um, it gives you a backing, either like a whole band or just, as you'll see, something fairly rudimentary. Now this is an area where there's significant divergence in what these pianos will give to you. And there's no doubt whatsoever that the PS500 um, offers far more than the P515. The 515 will give you 40 rhythms, they're called, of various different musical genres. Um, but they're so basic, really, that I only consider them good for practice purposes. They're a bit like glorified metronomes, really. Um, there's a, they give you a simple drum beat backing and a very basic gu bass guitar, which follows your chord inputs on the keyboards. There's no proper introductions, variations, drum fills or endings. So you can't really put anything like a polished performance together. Um, I'll stop waffling again and give you a playing example. So that should give you an idea. It was pretty basic. You can hear a drum beat and you can hear a bass guitar that's following my inputs. And there are uh, a number, in fact, 40, I think it was, 40 rhythms of various different musical genres. Um, <coughs> but that's it, that's it, that's all it gives to you. But rhythms and accompaniments on PS500 are a totally different experience and they're miles better. Um, and to do this, I'm using the companion app called Yamaha Smart Pianist which I'll get into later, but well, I'll tell you why it's so important to use. But that's what I've got set up on the, on the uh, music rest here. So I'm going to load up one of my styles and just listen to how this is different. Rather than just a simple bass and a simple um, drum backing, this is going to give me an entire band. So you'll hear guitars, you'll hear strings, you'll hear synthesizers, all sorts of extra instrumentation going on in the background. It's still following my input. So, here we go.
So you can hear there's loads more going on there. Now both of them I used a fairly basic standard 8-beat pop uh, rhythm, but I might just use something a bit different now on PS500 to bring out some extra instrumentation. So uh, even in the percussion actually there was loads extra on that one, wasn't there? Um, I heard a, a timpani uh, somewhere in the background and also a triangle and vibes and stuff going on. So I'm going to choose something from a different musical genre now via the app. Um, let's go and do something completely different. So let's say, uh, let's go with the dance one, shall we? So uh, club dance, this one. And I've got four variations as well. That's one of the other big differences is um, P515 will give you just one variation per rhythm. Uh, the app on PS500 gives me four different variations. So for variation A, it's good for the first verse of a song. And then as you work your way through B, C, and D, by the time you get to D, you've added loads of extra instrumentation. Everything has got a great big lift and you're good for the chorus of the song and the middle eight as well. So here's uh, something from Club Dance. I'll put a bit of cleansing jazz afterwards there to um, cleanse the palate. But hopefully that's given you an idea that the styles and the backings on PS500 are just way more complex and they give you much more in terms of instrumentation. And they're much more like the um, PSR series of keyboards from Yamaha or indeed the DGX670 as well. So you've got hundreds and hundreds of styles built in. Um, and way more as well, it's quantity as well as quality because when you've got the app, the Yamaha Smart Pianist app plugged in, um, you've actually got more than 600 to play with. There are multiple variations, as I said, A, B, C, D in each style. So you can put together very polished sounding performances. With P515, the rhythms are very much just turn it on and turn it off, and there's maybe four beats that will play out for you, but um, PS500 will give you uh, introductions and endings that are, and variations that allow you to put together a much more polished professional performance that's got a start, a middle, middle eight, chorus and an ending as well. On to difference number four and this is to do with the app that I'm using here uh, called Yamaha Smart Pianist. Um, it's designed this app to work with many Yamaha models uh, and it actually does work with both of these models. Uh, it's free to download and it really is an excellent app. The design of it is great. You can navigate your way around what's on these keyboards and use, them, use it as a controller app and it's terrific. Um, however, aside from that basic functionality, um, being a controller, there's a significant difference in what the app brings to each of these models. It is a significant difference. Um, when using the Smart Pianist app with the P515, the app only shows you 
and allows you to control what is already built in uh, to the piano itself. For example, you can change the onboard voices, you can layer the onboard voices, you can select an onboard rhythm and change the tempo, alter the fine tuning, etc. Do all the things that you would do inside the menu, you can do via the Smart Pianist app. Uh, it acts as a portal, if you will, to what is inside the P515. Um, but when you're using Smart Pianist app with the PS500, you actually unlock loads of extra voices, backing styles, songs, and recording functionality, um, plus some other things, only a tiny fraction of which would be available to you if you were using the piano as a standalone model without the iPad. Uh, here's an example of what I mean. Um, when you don't have the iPad, uh, the Smart Pianist app loaded in and connected to PS500, um, you only have a hundred voices available to you and you can control them using this panel just here. When you have the app plugged in, you have uh, 560 additional voices. And this is gonna be things like, in fact, I will load it up here. I'm gonna turn my mic off and play a few different voices, go through the categories. Uh, I'd go to the voice section just here and what I have available to me down the left-hand side of the screen, I'm sorry you can't see this at the minute, is piano, organ, guitar, strings and vocal, brass and woodwind, percussion and drums and synth. Each one has got loads of separate categories. And even in piano alone, I've got grand piano category, upright piano category, piano layer category, electric piano, uh, FM electric piano, clavichord, harpsichord, so there's loads of organs. I've got tone wheel organs, transistor organs, classical organs. Uh, let me just play a few to give you a flavor of, uh, of the variation of voices here. Well, that was piano, and I went through to the bright piano there. Um, let's go into organ and try classical pipe organ. This is quite an impressive sound. quite nice wasn't it um, guitars this is a really nice one this is where we get some of the really top end voices from Yamaha's PSR um, portable keyboards that become available to us here here's the uh, guitar section and then I'll go into strings
<clears throat> so we get a huge variety. Uh, as I said, over 600 voices altogether in PS500 when you have the Smart Pianist app connected. Um, now, remember we have the Streamlight Learning System in the panel of this keyboard here where it has the LED lights that drop down. Um, what do you have when you use the iPad app, the Smart Pianist app, is 303 additional songs to what's already built into the keyboard. So you're going to get a massive uh, extra selection of different genres, pop, rock, jazz, classical, um, old time. That's all going to be uh, in there when you're using the app. You will have a lot of extra backing styles as well. It's only 100 that's built into the piano, but with Smart Pianist app connected, you get 270 additional styles. And uh, to illustrate the point, I will just play a little bit here for you. Um, let's go in. So I showed you before, I think it was pop and rock and one of the dance ones, but I'll go into a different category altogether. So let's try a bit of country and I'll just get a 70s country pop to give an example of this one, shall I? So it gives you an idea of the extra styles that you have built in there as well. And of course, it's just making the whole piano much more versatile. Now, some other additional things you get when you're using the Smart Pianist app are 53 different types of reverb rather than just the five that are built into the piano. Um, and you get 16 track recording. So there is no recording functionality built into the PS500 unless you are using the app and then it gives you 16 tracks that you'll be able to layer on top of each other. So as you can see, the PS500 can be used without a smart device, but it really should be used with one. Uh, in my opinion, it's practically essential because it brings you much more than simply using the PS500 as a standalone piano. And uh, I'd urge you to watch my whole PS500 review video uh, on YouTube if you can, because I go into much more detail about what the Smart Pianist app can do for you. Now, difference number five is the main piano sounds on offer between these two instruments. Now, both of them are sampled from Yamaha's world-renowned CFX Concert Grand Piano, one of the world's best concert grand pianos, and they also contain the, the wonderful Bosendorfer Imperial Grand, um, which I will, I'll play for you on both because the, the Yamaha you've heard already but I'm going to switch to the Bosendorfer now because it's a beautiful warm soft piano sound and it's great that it's on both of these instruments so I'll just uh, noodle on that a little bit for you now I'll start with PS500 so go back to the piano category choose my Bosendorfer there it is here we go P515, load up the Bosendorfer, and as I said before, because of its key mechanism, I just want to play it more, and I feel like an old pair of jeans pulling it on. It's comfortable, um, it responds to my inputs, and it makes me want to play with more feeling as well. So here we go, here's the Bosendorfer on P515.
So I'm sold on P515 uh, giving you the better piano playing experience. So um, Bosendorfer on both of those models. Uh, so in my opinion, anyone with playing experience, and I've got 25 years plus playing experience, I think we'll find PS, uh, P515 superior. It feels more natural. It's the wooden keys. It instantly feels right when you lay your hands on it. And as you've seen, it, it just conjures up something within you when you start playing that um, um, makes, it brings out your musicality, definitely. Um, playing the PS500 is not the same experience, frankly. Bear in mind, I'm someone who's played a lot of different models of digital pianos and keyboards over the years, so I have become ultra choosy. I fancy if you went into any showroom and tried these two side by side, unless you have a lot of experience, you may not appreciate instantly the difference, but I'm sure you will over time um, because the P515 just offers, it offers you, as I said before, more shades of color in your palette, <clears throat> more chance for variation. Um, if I was teaching a beginner on PS500 and they said, Chris, I'm going home and practicing every week on a PS500, uh, if they're a young beginner or even an adult beginner, I'd still be happy because this key mechanism it is realistic. It does feel like a piano. It's definitely adequate for helping you learn to play. Um, so it shouldn't be a deal breaker, that's for sure. Um, but as I'm comparing the two, I just I'm, I want to be as honest and as frank as I can be because I'm, we're getting these questions every week about these two pianos. So in summary, they're made for different purposes, uh, as you've been able to see. Uh, what becomes obvious is um, there's a lot of crossover in what they have for sure, but they're just designed for different things. That's just how it is. Um, but I think a fair conclusion would be the PS500 is designed to aid people that are learning to play who like using technology because of the smart pianist app and the fact you use a smartphone or tablet with it. Um, and they also like playing with rhythms and backings and getting a bit more from their, their instrument. In comparison, the P515 is designed to offer premium level piano playing experience to facilitate the greater requirements, the sensitivities, the articulation, the subtleties of a higher standard of playing. So um, I hope that gives you a good idea of what the differences are between these two. That's what this video has been all about. And uh, if it's been helpful to you, please press the thumbs up below the video because that really helps us spread this video around, get people to know e-pianos. And uh, let us know what you think in the comments section below. We'll answer your questions or get in touch via the website, etc., etc. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.